What's going on everybody? Today we're talking about one reason you might not know about as to why your glucose levels are running high in type 2 diabetes. The motivation for the video today was really when I speak to patients, they have no idea about this, but this one factor has a huge influence on what your glucose levels are gonna be doing. If you don't know me, I'm Mark from DiabetesDietGuy.com, so welcome. Uh, that's a free blog that I run for people with diabetes, and I also have a services page at markgreennutrition.co.uk where I help coach people with nutrition and exercise to help them improve their lifestyle and their overall health. When people think diabetes, they usually drum straight to the three big players in the game. They think insulin, they think carbohydrate, and they think pancreas. And yeah, those three things are very important, but there's a fourth player that has just as big an impact as those other three as to what your glucose levels will do, but seems to be very rarely spoke about or actually understood. And the factor I'm talking about is your liver. Your liver has a huge influence on what your glucose levels will be doing. And this is particularly true in type two diabetes. But to know why this is, we need to understand what the liver does, so then you can start to work backwards and see how it might be undoing your best efforts to control your glucose levels. And to do that, we need to get into the Mac and draw it out. So here we go. So let's have a look at what your body does if you do not have type two diabetes. So usually, your liver is producing glucose between meals and overnight to give you a steady stream of glucose supply. Now what usually happens is you eat, insulin is released, and insulin tells the liver to turn off its glucose release. So we lose that internal supply and then we eat. So you might have your three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So each time you have carbohydrates in particular entering the system, insulin is released, tells the liver to turn off um, the glucose supply, and therefore we only have the carbohydrates in the system from the food. Now it's slightly different in type two diabetes, and that's because we have a layer of fat, generally speaking, around the liver. So insulin cannot get to it. So instead what happens is, we still have some production of glucose coming from the liver. And then on top of that, we have our meals. So as you can see in this instance, the glucose levels are higher compared to someone without diabetes. So let's move on. So let's see what the difference is then, just to plot it again. So this time, um, let's just plot this on top of both graphs. So we have someone without diabetes here. So we ignore the liver glucose line there. So that, just look at the peak glucose uh, side by side. Then we have someone with diabetes. Okay. So you can see the starting point for someone without diabetes is at the bottom of the graph. We're coming from pretty much zero because it's only the food that is influencing the glucose levels. Whereas someone with diabetes, the meal is going on top of that liver glucose production which leaves us with this extra glucose in the system, which is why you might be seeing higher glucose levels than you'd like to. So as you can see, it's the liver that is producing glucose between meals that usually is turned off when we eat food because insulin tells it to stop producing glucose. But it's in type two diabetes when this becomes a problem because the liver's unable to get the message from insulin to tell it to stop producing that glucose. So we get a double effect. We get glucose from the liver, and we get glucose from the meal. We can either eat less carbohydrate, which then will reduce the potential for glucose levels going high after meals, because we know we've got that baseline from the liver to contend with, or we can do something about it. So how do you reduce fat around the liver? Well, it depends on the cause, really. Obviously, there'll be a genetic element with some people. Some people, they might have just been hitting the drink too hard. But for most people with type 2 diabetes, it kind of comes hand in hand that people that have type 2 diabetes also have fatty liver as a result of being overweight and not really doing as much exercise as perhaps they should be. Now this isn't a criticism, it's just uh, help you understand why this might be happening. Because if we understand that, you can then do something about it to address it. But generally speaking, it comes down to losing some weight. And the reason is when you start to lose weight, you also lose weight around your organs, particularly the liver. You may have heard about the remission studies in type two diabetes that were published at the end of 2017. And they gave people low calorie diets of around 800 calories a day for three to five months. And what that was designed to do was not actually um, do anything with the pancreas necessarily or the insulin that it's producing. It was more about shedding the fat around the liver so then the insulin that is being produced can have a much uh, more efficient message to tell the liver to stop producing glucose. 
And that's actually the reason why the people that lost the most weight were able to see the biggest rates of remission. So in order to have the same result for you, you need to find a way that you can lose weight and keep it off to prevent the problem accumulating or manifesting again in the long term. And you can do that with something a bit more extreme like the remission trial um, on a low calorie diet. But do keep in mind that tends to be very short term. You need to have a long term maintenance plan in mind after that. Or you can do the slow and steady approach, which I find from just experience, patients struggle with a bit more because it's not as quick as they'd like. But if you're consistent and you stick with it, it will happen for you. It doesn't mean you'll necessarily go into remission, but your diabetes levels will come down and your overall condition and health will improve. And I think that's it for today, guys. So really, this video was literally just to give you a bit more information about the fourth factor that might be causing high glucose levels in your body. Remember, if you find this useful, follow along at home, hit the subscribe button, or check me out on Facebook. Uh, just search Diabetes Diet Guy. Got a nice community going. We, uh, we have over a, a thousand likes to date, and it's really nice to see people interacting and asking questions. And, and I get back to as many people as I can, but also the really nice thing is seeing people talk amongst themselves and, and really supporting one another. So if that's something that would be of interest to you, make sure you check us out, find us, um, like the page and join the community.